commence operation retrieve my wedding ring and save my marriage. One slight oversight on my behalf. I just have to grin and bear it. Oh. Oh. Whoa, man. Oh. Good morning, everybody. Fresh week here on the boat. Should be quite a full on one, actually. A full on few weeks. We've got some quite exciting news. Just waiting for the coffee machine to warm up. I'll talk you through it. So we've essentially found a dock that we can paint the boat in, which is going to be this year and it's actually only in a couple of weeks time, beginning of October. The one that we originally had our eyes set on is a dry dock and that was about half the price, um, which is why that's booked out till the end of next summer. So we've gone for a more expensive option, but it means at least the boat will be finished hopefully this year, he says. So with the dock being that much more expensive, I want as little time in there as possible. Obviously it's 140 quid a day, so every day that we're not in there helps. I don't want to rush it but the more I can do prior to getting the boat in there, obviously the better. So I'm gonna start on the stern deck today. No, that's the stern deck. The bow deck today. I start prepping that and then that one at a later date, hopefully before we get in there. Now, paint system wise, there's a bit of controversy in the boating world as to what the best paint is. Most people swear by International, which is like up here, creme de la creme, comes in tiny little tins and it's really expensive. Now, I, I don't mind the cost of the paint. My main worry is the amount of coats that you need and the drying time. Now on international paint, which is what, there's a, there's a series of videos by John Barnard, I think. I'm pretty sure he uses international paint. It's like the best of the best. Obviously, if you're having a professional job done, you're gonna want someone to use the proper paint because it's gonna be about 14 grand. Our neighbor's boat, gorgeous. That was about 14,000 to paint that boat, which I'd just be scared to take it anywhere. And on international paints, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's four undercoats and four top coats, I think. So eight coats and the drying times in between. Anyway, depending on time of year. Now we're getting into a later time of year, so it's gonna be colder, it's gonna take longer to dry. There's more chance of it getting condensation in the paint. The drying time on those is almost gonna be a full day in between. Not Normally it's like 12 hours, but I could see this time of year potentially going up to like 24 hours in between each coat if you wanna sand it back and get a really good finish. That's not really an option for us. now. When we were back in the other marina with Uncle Dave, he showed us a few boats that were painted with Dulux. It's not just Dulux emulsion or anything stupid like that, it's Dulux Weather Shield, which is a outdoor paint. Now we're going one step further and we're gonna go Dulux Metal Shield, which is a specialist metal one. And it's only a four, no, three coat system. They suggest one zinc phosphate undercoat, which is like one up from red oxide. So one of those and then two um, top coats and that gives you eight years performance. Obviously we're very close to water so I'm going to go for maybe an extra undercoat and an extra top coat and that's still only five coats and the drying time on this Dulux is almost half that of international so it just makes sense. The boat's old, it's fairly rough on the outside. We'd, we'd have to spend weeks filler in it to get it anywhere sort of near a decent perfect finish if you like. My worry with filler is that the temperature that these boats get in the summer that it's going to pop um, and just come off so i want to use minimum filler leave some of the character if you will on the boat there's a fair bit of pitting and stuff going to take windows out and go back to metal on the most part we're going to hire a school blur like with the diamond i think the diamond bits almost takes off instantly and then you've got to sand it so most of our time can be spent prepping the boat undercover because we're hopefully going to get it for eight to ten days now if we're doing the minimum is three coats of paint with this Dulux system, which sounds crazy to even be mentioned three coats. Let's say we're gonna do four coats or five. That's five of those days of painting because once you've painted, you need to leave. You don't really wanna be doing anything else. Once they're painted, you literally just paint the, the boat to dry to be in there. So that gives us three to five days of prep um, inside, which isn't a lot of time to be fair, but it's a lot better than if we had um, another paint. It's probably a bit, um, hopeful that the paint is going to stay sort of um, unfaded for eight years but like I said Uncle Dave showed us some boats in the marina one of those had been painted 10 years it faded but no rust had come through or anything it was actually really quite a good finish if you'd have polished it up you probably could have brought it back so I'm really impressed the other benefit of that is the builders merchant that I used to work at CRS a little plug for them um, they've basically this Dulux metal shield isn't a cheap paint um, it's actually really quite expensive for a five litres of primer um, it's 183 quid from Dulux or Brewers. They can mix up any color that we want. We're essentially doing a racing green on the sides and a 
white on the roof. Talking to anyone with some sort of experience of living on a boat through summer, white roof, all these cream is a way to go just to, just to sort of stop the heat. So that's all happening fairly quickly. I'm gonna crack on today, like I said, and start on the bow deck. Um, loads of preps to do, need to clear that out. I'm gonna get some nice before and after photos because I think that'll really transform that end. <laughs> One slight oversight on my behalf is having a battery grinder. So I've just ran out, of, I just ran two batteries down and I had one spare but it's flat so I need to let them charge up. I've got a mains powered sander but I don't think I've got an extension lead that will reach from the bedroom so I might move on to that next if I can plug it in. My darling wife has left me some lovely homemade vegetable soup. So I'm gonna warm that up, a bit of toast. Have that for lunch. I've put the phone back on charge because it's like half a batch already and I'll catch up with you in a minute. So the first battery is still charging. Um, and I can't find an extension lead, but I remember about the EcoFlow. So I'm gonna use my corded sander with that until long it lasts. I don't know how much charger's got actually so I could connect the solar panel up. Sixty five percent. We'll see how long that lasts. This is progress so far with the flappy disc. Just getting most of the surface rust off. There's loads of pit in this is really quite a bad bit. I'm gonna go in with um drill attachment with a wire brush and get that out after. Because this area is mostly going to be under cover and the paint's in fairly good condition compared to the rest of it, I'm not going to go back to metal on this, going to save a lot of time. Oh, it's only coming through due to scratches rather than actually coming through, so I'll get rid of the rust bits deep, even it out. Cool. So the paint in here is not too thick, but I think I'm gonna to have to go back to burn metal on the whole lot because as you start getting into it and under it, it starts, I don't know if you can see, it looks quite dusty my screen. Um, you can see little brown spots and just everywhere you go there's where it's just creeping through. So I think the whole lot's gonna to have to come off. On the outside, it won't be too bad because I'm gonna rent one of them school burrs, but in here, um, I'm just gonna to have to grin and bear it. The battery's nearly charged for the grinder, the first one anyway, so. That will help in a minute. For the meantime, progress update. I've almost done 
this side to a certain level and you only need to get in all the pit in. Go tackle this corner. I've got about an hour of being able to make noise until five o'clock when it's probably not very neighbourly. But I'm gonna see how much I can do of this and this. And then tackle these tomorrow. Good morning, it's a lovely day for it. A little bit cold on the boat still. That's not the thermometer. That is 12 degrees. It's not really that cold to be honest, but just a change of the seasons. Really nice day out. Let me show you how far I got yesterday. I carried on a little bit after I put the camera down and I wasn't sure if I was going to use vac tan on any of it. Oh, I've got my stuff there. Um, but I had some lying around and just on the real deep pit in, I've put it in where it's hard to get like the wire brush and stuff. Um, I'll show you in a minute, I forgot I put all this stuff. But basically, this bit's as good as done. This bit's as good as done. I need to go back over it and sort of get these deep bits, but that, 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 and vac tanned all the pitting like I said that's all done this bottom bit which needs some filler I didn't start stripping the paint until maybe half 10 11 yesterday um, so I'm gonna have a little bit of an earlier start and hopefully get to a stage where I can start applying some primer today which will be really exciting the bulkhead um, which is green at the minute that's not too bad actually no rust coming through still I, I went down through the sort of um, layers of paint goes green then to red, then to yellow, and under the yellow is bare metal. That yellow is original, but um, this boat was blue and yellow. It was an ex-black Prince Hire boat, if anyone doesn't know, I've put an old photo up of it. So I'm not gonna go back to metal over the whole lot. I'm literally gonna take probably the top green layer and just get it smoothed out, get a nice surface on it, so that shouldn't take as long as actually stripping back to metal on the rest of it. I didn't take a video yesterday, but the floor, even with the bedroom door shut, this whole floor was just covered in that dust. So whilst it's still quite early, I'm going to start on the bulkhead because that is at least a little quieter with the sander rather than starting on the stripping with the grinder. You take that light out. Oh, I could have taken this out as well really. Because these screws might need driven. Or do I just go right up to it? I'm not going to take the windows out, that's going to be more hassle than it's worth because this place is sheltered anyway, so it's less likely for rain to get stuck behind these. All the ones down the side and the hatches and that are all coming back out, but these are going to stay on. I attempted these screws yesterday, this hinge worked, that one didn't, um, and that one they don't want to budge either, so I'm going to leave the door in um, and just go up to it. Right, little progress update for you. Bulkhead's mostly done. I move on to the grinder attachment now and get all this awkward bit where it's quite pitted. Around the door frame. Door's plywood, I will sand that, but obviously I don't need quite as much sanding. And then move, probably grinder, maybe sander, I'm not sure. All this bit up to there, I've done that mostly. I will go back over it after with some finer sandpaper. I'd love tonight to at least get a chance of either putting some primer or at least filler on. That's the goal.
So, slight predicament. The sand is officially burnt out. It's not the end of the world. I'm going to get another one from Screwfix, but that's going to be probably 40, 30, 40 minute round trip. And it's about half past three. By the time I get back, I'm going to have an hour. Um, all three batteries are dead for the grinder. So I'm waiting. One's almost charged, actually, to be fair. So I could probably get 10 minutes use out of that. And I might just about finish one the other side. Then I've got a little bit more to do. So I'm tempted to do that. Get another sander for tomorrow for like the finishing work. Um, I've got another sander, but it's battery powered and all the batteries are more important for the grinder. So yeah, I'm going to grab a sander in a sec, a little bit of a rest, have a coffee and then wait for the batteries to charge, hit into it, hopefully get maybe an hour. I don't know. I'm looking for a clock. We ain't got one in there. Then maybe get an hour's work left. Definitely. Or I'm not I'm percent sure I won't be quite ready to prime tonight, but at least I'll be nearly there tomorrow. I'll be nearly there for tomorrow. I need a coffee, man. <laughs> I did a little more, but didn't film it because it was only one battery's worth. Um, just wanted to show you what the floors has been like, even with the doors shut. It's everywhere. Danny's back tomorrow and she's going to kill me. Look at the cup, even this. So close. A bit more stairs off. Up there. But that will have to wait till tomorrow, so I'm gonna have to tidy up and call it an evening. So a slight change of plan. Rather than having a nice early night, as I got back onto the stern to get inside, obviously I'm really dusty, so I was shaking myself off like that, and oh, fog light on, and my wedding ring flew off the, that finger straight into the canal. It's just gone five o'clock. It's gonna get dark in about an hour and a half, two hours maybe. Um, so I'm off to my parents' house where the GoPro is. Thank you John for suggesting to use a GoPro connected to a stick. Send that down and just see if it's there on the, hopefully on the surface of the sludge that is in the marina because it's like eight inches deep. Um, so I'm gonna try that on the end of a barge pole. Um, bit of wire for a hook first of all just hopefully I can get it I just really annoyed at myself it's like as you can tell dusty I am and then it just went <whistles> I've seen exactly where it hit the water though all happened in slow motion unfortunately um, or fortunately so yeah wish me luck I don't know if I can have a chance to do it tonight because it's going to get too dark I was looking at underwater torches for diving and stuff, but obviously you're trying to pick one of those up in England at five o'clock on a Friday. Chances are pretty slim. Amazon do them, next day delivery, maybe I'll just order one for tomorrow and tackle it in the morning. I just feel like I'm gonna have sort of one or two attempts at it before I end up pushing it right into the surface and we have to look at dredging it or something. <laughs> I've set up a water pump. I'm only laughing because I could actually cry, but if anyone doesn't know, Danny and I made each other's wedding ring, so Danny made this for me. It's obviously a one-off, as any wedding ring's a one-off really, I guess, and it's sentimental value, but this one's really special. Luckily though, this is a very worst case, because we know how clumsy we are, I need to get petrol. Um, we actually got the lady who helps make them, Jula, goldsmith, silversmith. Um, what size is that? On. She made us some moulds so that she can cast it out of silver or platinum for us in the future when we got a bit more money. That's the worst case anyway. I'll catch up with you in a minute. Good morning everybody. Commence Operation Retrieve My Wedding Ring 
and save my marriage. <laughs> I've got my GoPro on charge, I think. I've downloaded the app so I can connect to my phone to see it live. So the plan is to connect this to a pole or my litter pickers and at least locate it first to down to like the square sort of areas. But I'm pretty 99% sure went straight in between these two boats, us and our neighbor's boat. Um, now I've just measured the canal, it's four foot deep. These, I don't know if you can see of them, are three foot long. So my arm is gonna have to go in the water by at least a foot, which isn't too bad actually. I thought it was gonna be a bit deeper than that. Um, the main worry is the bottom's full of silt. We're in a marina, so it's even worse than the canal because all the boats are stagnant anyway. Just get a build up of like crap on the floor. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna give it a go. I'm gonna attach a, it's not a particularly waterproof torch, it's a bike torch, but I'm gonna tape around the charger port just to try and seal it up a little bit because that is so murky in there. Um, attach that to these. I've got a barge pole there as well. I might put that down with the GoPro first just to try and find it because like I said, without getting my arm wet um, first, if I don't need to, well, I'm gonna have to, if not put a hook on it or something. Um, Shall we get on? So as some of you probably would have already guessed as soon as the GoPro goes in the water, it disconnects from the live stream. Um, so you can't see where it's to or what it's doing. Um, I managed to record a couple of videos and have a look around, but it's so silty down there. <sighs> Might have to, I don't know, try and get in and sift some mud, I guess. It's four foot deep, so I'm gonna have to go underwater. Oh, God. Yesterday didn't quite go to plan either. I, I don't know how far I sort of filmed, but basically Danny got really upset and just wasn't really suitable to carry on filming. Tried my best, ended up like dredging part of the silt off the floor and putting it through a, um, what would you call it, like a sieve almost. Couldn't find it. Um, basically gave up on the idea of the ring and then a few of you recommended to get in touch with local metal detector club. So I contacted the Wiltshire one, joined that group and honestly within an hour, um, a guy gave me a number for a kid called Adam, who's actually going to come over with an underwater metal detector and hopefully help me locate. He's coming over in a couple of hours. He's based in Devizes, um, so yeah, really handy. Fingers crossed. I think I might owe him a beer and probably a trip out on a narrowboat or something. Um, today, this morning at least, I'm going to carry on and grind away at the bow deck. Hopefully, get that um, prepped today, ready for a coat of primer. I'm like really hoping I can at least get a coat of primer on it before we end up getting some rain and it starts rusting because that'd be quite sad it's only 9 a.m just a little bit early to start that sort of noise at the minute but fingers crossed neighbors one more day and you'll have a bit of peace and quiet again so this is where we're up to basically dan needs a light sand needs light sand got that bit to grind by the gas pipe that bit to grind a little bit there and up and over inside there So grinding wise, pretty much just this bit up here left to do now and then get back to the sander and just give it a nice um, key all over. Adam's here and he's very kindly offered with a quite expensive metal detector to try and find the ring. Going a bit mental because it's all still running. All the boats, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's right over there, that is. Oh my god. Dead under that, that whatever that item is. I've got something else actually, it's coming handy as well. Can you find sort of the rough area? Yeah. You better stick that inside that thing. When it comes near metal, it'll just start vibrating and the light will come on. So if you sort oh, of stick that in that mud, fully waterproof, I'm guessing then. Yeah, he's fully waterproof, yeah. Uh, you yeah. have to be almost touching the light and about four inches of water. Oh, that's a great idea. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> it seems like the only sort of repetitive signal down yeah. there, so maybe that is it, but... Yeah, 
probably a better method, might you put the pinpoint on the end of a pole. Mm. Just feel it vibrate sort of thing. Yeah, it might be a better idea. Oh. Something there. And it's something tiny as well. This is something. Oh yeah, a bit of fan. Oh well, that's one less. That's one less thing to do. Yeah, one less item. chance of scooping up with this while putting the pinpoint with the pot, yeah. So, even on dry land sometimes you've got you think where is it? It's stuck sort of the back of your hand yeah, yeah. that. where is it and there it is there you wouldn't even think. <laughs> well that was something really small wasn't it? Whatever yeah. that was. Could well have been it. Right on top of it there. Yeah. And debating jumping in. Um well hello very brave. There. Dead on top of it. <laughs> yeah. I reckon I might. I'm going to get it. Get in, I think. Or dunk yourself under. I reckon it's through the end of the Yeah. Oh, good man. <laughs> Yeah, if you go down and come back up with it, I mean, it's worth, worth it. Worth it, yeah. If you go down and come up with a ring pull, yeah. you're going to be a happy bunny. <laughs> The lack of metal, and then keep picking up this little item in the rough area is maybe maybe worth giving it a go. Oh, nice cold drink, mate. It's very cold water shock oh. treat. Oh. Whoa, man! Oh. Christ! Oh. Christ! <laughs> right. Oh. Gotta go brave enough to get under now. I'll push push his boats away from each other. Give a bit more room. Oh. Um, hang on. Oh. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get my head under that bloody deep. Yeah, so I know what you're saying, to your feet. Yeah, squashing your lungs up as well at the same time, I know what you're saying. I'll tell you what, give me that, um... Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I think that's in the scoop, then. Huh? I literally should be on top of, the, of it now. Yeah, see if I can... Oh, is it? <laughs> it does cheat your charge up with a USB. Does it? Yeah. I might bang that on and... I mean, you're more than welcome to keep hold of it for a little bit. Yeah, if you're like. sure. Yeah, no problem at all. I mean, you know who I am. I know yeah. who you are, so... The other thing is, I mean, if you're in there... Drop me in there, innit? <laughs> <laughs> oh, committed now. 
the tourist back. <laughs> yeah. Um. <sighs> Stop filming, Fucking but get in, man. stuck on the back, bottom of this just yes. as the battery died. That was worth jumping in, wasn't it? Move, mate. Right, are you right there? <laughs> yes. I've got to look for a new voice now. <laughs> oh, well done, mate. That is skill, mate. Fair play. Bloody hell. That's why it was, that's why it was acting funny. It wasn't yeah, it yeah. run out of battery. Oh, what? It's stuck on the bloody thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You said that, didn't you? That's what always happened. You look for something. You think, where is it? Where is it? Yeah, man. And a little quarter hammer tilt, and you stuck the back of your hand there. Lovely. Only got it, mate. That's fucking brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> yeah.